hey guys and welcome back to another video with Celsec and I have to apologize for not uploading for a like longer period of time but I had a lot of stuff going on so I managed to record that now with that being said let's just dive in and this time as as promised I'm doing EXE hijacking and I am connecting a mythic to agent with that EXE hijacking so you can see how to effectively establish persistent using that mythic C2 and via exploiting EXE hijacking now I need to mention that in order to perform EXE hijacking, you already need to have some kind of local access. So the idea here is to pretty much perform bridge escalation when you find a possible vector for it. So you find that it's using some kind of a program which is using another EXE. You can hijack that EXE by having the proper permissions and so on. So this scenario for establishing persistence, but you are needing already establishing local access. With that being said, let's just open the both C files and see what they do. So we have program C, which is our main one. And what that does is pretty much have a bunch of functions. So we have two programs, two files. Another uh, one of it is program, which is our main one. And let's start with that IP info.c, which is pretty much doing a IP config. It's really a simple demo, which demonstrates how different niggas can be called and how they can be hijacked so if i run this program it's gonna do like ip config there and it's all we're gonna do and now that program.c if i run it we have some custom cli tool which is which can pretty much uh see our our ip address it can write a file let's say zero dot text and let's say we, we want to write 99 to it then we can read the file zero dot text we have 99 then we have exit so that's it and if we have here if we look at the directory we can see the file successfully written so it has a bunch of functions as you can see and one of these functions can be hijacked because it's dependent on different exes so keep in mind that in real world scenario it's first either really hard to find such tag vectors since you're gonna need to have some t clients t things going on and most of the things are using already pre-established software and they are not using t clients but if they do there's a chance you can find in the dll or exe hijacking and this can be done by enumerating different custom functions or enumerating the binary versus engineering stuff like that so we're going to need to find what is calling what and how that application works all right since we know that after let's see the code now and we have a that's our menu and we have a switch statement which is pretty much getting the number on our choice and if the number is one it redirects us to that ip info command and that ip info command is doing system ip info .txt and press key to continue this is pretty much our end screen that ip info .txt is pretty much that compile txt from the ip info .c, which is doing itself ip config so i know i could just copy that and paste it here but the program will not be vulnerable so i want to showcase what means exe hijacking so it relies on different exe and it's just the demo guys i mean this uh, in your engagement should be like complex exe doing multiple stuff but here for the sake of the demo i just named it to be like ip config that's it so let's close the window now and imagine we have local access that directory and we can see a bunch of exes so the first step is to pretty much enumerate if we can write to this folder we can do it like with the GUI by clicking properties security uh, and we have that LSEC user and we can pretty much do whatever we want if you were if you were like in a let's see AD account or different user on different Windows machine or the different user on the same machine you could have different privileges but genuinely you're gonna need to have the privilege to modify files inside this can be also checked with powershell by navigating to some directory desktop exe hijack and type get acl then we have the access and what was it get acl uh what was it get acl access maybe yeah i think that's it so we have full control for systems full control for administrators and we have full control for command lsec 
show now what we need to do is to pretty much go to our C2, Mythic C2 and generate a payload. If you don't know how to install Mythic C2, I've already made a video, you can find it on the top right corner and I covered how to install the app agent and the HTTP C2 profile. Keep in mind that there are multiple C2 profiles, you can go ahead and play around with it, but we're gonna use HTTP and Apple for just simple case. For simplicity, demonstrating how to do exit hijacking. So let's go here and pretty much create a payload. Windows, of course, next build parameter, win exe, next. And now let's do I cat CP, keep in mind that how much you add, the heavier the payload is gonna be and the heavier the exe is gonna be. Then we need the exit, it's just like, we always need the exit. Then we have get briefs, I have config and I hope that's enough for the showcase. Let's do move, mkdir, and PowerShell. Yeah, all right. So actually, let's remove the PowerShell. I think we already have enough commands. All right. So, and let's do who am I? All right. Who am I there? And let's move it here. Not like that, but like that. All right. Sure. Then go next. HTTP. Let's do, what's our IP address? Hmm. So it seems that the Mythic C2 is using Docker, we can see a bunch of addresses there, but I'm sure we need to copy that one. So it's getting mapped. So let's remove the HTTP, go back interval, go back port 80, encryption type. No use, no custom user agents, just read the defaults and go for next. I hope that's the proper way of creating it. Apple.exe and create wrapper, create payload, sorry. All right. Come on. And where was it now? So where is the payloads? Maybe here. Maybe operators, operations. Modify. Hmm, I'm searching for a payload there. No, it's not under socks. Tokens, tasks. Ah, payloads. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we have the payload, now let's try to download that, or actually, yeah, just download that and ship it to our Windows environment. So let's go to open up a new terminal, go to CD downloads and do IF config again and Python 3 and HTTP.server 8443. I'm sure it is gonna be like already helped, yeah. 8080, HTTP proxy, it's already in use, 8443, all right. Copy the IP address there, go to my commando, Firefox, don't update now, oh my god, never mind. Hope it's fast, it is. Paste it here, and come on. Oh, we need 448443. My bad. Download the app and keep in mind that when you're generating payload, you have to uh, perform the exit hijacking as well as the hijacking. You have to always consider AV version. Now it's inside my commando, and my commando is pretty much not having any of these things, but in your engagement, you have to consider like doing a proper AV version before that. So you need to gather enough information about what is the AV, test it yourself if you can, and stuff like that. So we need to copy it to the local directory. Now let's back up that file. Let's call it xz1, or actually IP info one And if we run the program now, we do one, not is gonna, it's not recognized. Now let's remove, rename that into IP info. Now run the program once again. The one 
and as you can see the terminal hangs so let's go back to mythic and see if we have a payload so callback where is it active callbacks and we have so what happens is we pretty much have the IP address right so what happens here is pretty much that program since it looks for a specific path and a specific exe it executes that exe there and by specific path i write because it genuinely works first inside its own directory and tries to loop backwards and it does tries to loop into like a program files program files program data and folders like that so what happens is pretty much we need to change the name of the exe and if the AV is okay with that, we can pretty much hijack it, paste our own malicious exe, and when it's being called, our payload was triggered. So if I go to my mythic there, let's do interact and type who am I? This submitted, we have to wait a little bit since like this is not a standard reverse shell, it's a C2, which is pretty much a little bit different, so it needs time to process each command. It needs time to pretty much give us output in time base. That's because it's harder for systems to detect that. Because it's not a single session, pretty much when you type commands, you receive an output, but it's like a, it sends a single command, it waits for an output, being a buff, in a different like random time interval, and then sends the, the response back. So that way it makes it harder to detect and of course now it's like a 10 second interval but in real engagement it should be like a minute or even hours and we can see command well sec so that's the EG hijacking guys that's how to pretty much hijack your own i know it's simple but i hope i showcase that with mythic because i know it's kind of fun and interesting to do it with mythic it's a nice c2 framework and i have to take a look at that sliver because i've never ever experienced that and everyone says it's like a super cool so maybe I'm going to do a video about that. Make sure to pause it in the comment if you need or want to see a video about silver. And hope you enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. This way you help me a lot. And I'll see you right in the next one.